Moving on from that, we've got this clip to play also that I didn't talk about or feature last time because I forgot to cover it. But essentially, um, one of my favorite rappers from TDE, um, Top Top Ent Entertainment, is Reason. And he sat down with Back on Fig a couple of days ago for an interview, which was really good. A really kind of open interview. If you know Reason and his music or you just know Reason as a person, you'll know from his previous interviews that he's done on Joe Budden podcast and stuff, he's really open. He's, a, he's an incredibly vulnerable and honest type of person when it comes to art and the music he creates. He's got a really personal connection with his fans. But whenever he's on radio talking about his situation, being on a label and music and whatever, he's always incredibly honest, maybe to a fault. He'll talk about the stuff that he's done wrong, the stuff the label's done wrong, and just kind of lay it bare. And I guess on this episode of Back on Fig, he was frustrated because he's got an album soon to be dropping and he's basically frustrated in general with the label because he feels like the label's been kind of holding him back a bit um, and just kind of, you know, create differences that artists have with labels. You hear it all the time. It's a common complaint. So he sat on stream, spoke about his complaints, but then because it was live streamed, one of the presidents of Top Dog, um, Musa, happened to be watching and I guess this was the the straw that broke the camel's back because he had enough and he called live on air to T-Rail and wanted to address some of the claims that, you know, Reason was putting out there about the label doing this wrong and that wrong. And in the process, he spoke incredibly rudely, I felt, to his artists. Imagine, this is, on the phone is Musa. He's one of the presidents of Top Dog Entertainment. He's actually the son of Top Dog himself. And he is essentially Reason's boss. And he gets on stream, calls the guy and essentially you know, suns him live on air. And I think it's incredibly, incredibly unprofessional to do so. But also the worst thing about it is that I felt like t Rell and maybe to a lesser extent Matt Wop kind of played a role in antagonizing the situation. Like they kind of made the situation what it is by essentially kind of, you know, riling reason up and laughing at his situation and just kind of being messy. And that's what I feel like led to the situation. So t Rell and Matt Wop do have a part to play in this nonsense, unfortunately, but just hear how disrespectful this phone call because i feel like this stuff is something you could do in private you shouldn't be airing out your business or you know scolding your employees in public like this i think this is really really bad look um uh, uh, you, uh, you know hey mac hey mac you know like niggas don't even be getting on your talk normally us nigga at td we, we 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 take the downfall when niggas albums ain't coming out and it's never, it's never us holding albums. The niggas want to oh, drop man. records, niggas drop records. You know what I'm saying? But niggas never gonna jump on line and air shit out. But Big Reese, you wanna have a convo? Let's have a convo, man. So oh. it sound like, it sound like you don't wanna be here, damn near. Nah, I never said that. I said I would never do it no other way. Let's go viral since you wanna do it. Come on. Oh, uh, hey, let, let me start by saying this though, right here. Hey, T Real, can you name me 10 Reason songs right now? You from LA, you a LA native. Can you name me 10 Reason songs right now? No. Why is that? I have Mac, no even fucking. Mac, Mac, hey, hold on, hold on. Mac, from the, you from the team, <coughs> Mac. Can you name me 10, can you name me 10 Reason songs? Of course. Honestly. Name them. Ah. Ah. No, <laughs> it was a funny ass day. <laughs> like, imagine your president of your label saying that to you. This is reason. That's a rapper. He's calling up and he's grilling the guys and saying, "Okay, you're complaining about us, but can you guys name ten reason songs?" That's an awful thing to say. Exactly, Coyle. I was about to say that. The funny thing about saying that sort of statement is, as a way to kind of, you know, um, demonstrate that reason maybe isn't as popular as he thinks he is. I don't think many people can name ten songs. Like. I was saying this the other day to somebody, I forgot who I was saying it to, but because I DJ on the side and because I like listening to music anyway, and because I'm a fucking loner and don't spend any time outside of streaming with people like a lot, I don't really meet up friends that much. I have a lot of free time to do stuff. I listen to a lot of music, but there's one time I was speaking to somebody, I forgot who I was speaking to. I was like, I think a lot of these music stats and numbers are, fu are kind of, you know, are, are not real, are fugazi because... I don't know many people who listen to music, everything that comes out, as much as they, as much as the stats say they do, because the stats make it seem like everybody's winning. But I don't think people listen to music that that much. So if, if that's the case, I don't think there's many people out there who can name ten songs because people, especially in the in the streaming era, in the playlist era, you just play a playlist, and sometimes on most playlist settings they have the ability to just even if your playlist finishes, it will just knock the next song into the into the list because based off the algorithm of stuff that you already previously liked. 
so you don't have to even know what a song is or the lyrics or the name of it so to say that as a kind of as a, as a diss is really weird because i don't think there's many people there who can who can name 10 kendrick records i don't think there's many people out there who can name 10 schoolboy q records like I don't, there's not many of them that could do that you have to be really balls deep in music to actually give the fuck out of that and also that isn't a fucking good thing to say for people especially if they're on a label i think it's really bad look <laughs> what you all, all i'm trying to say is right even when niggas say niggas came in at weird times, hey, Dave, my nigga, Doc, my nigga, I love them niggas. Dave never wanted us to sign, sign reason. He called him a substitute teacher. Jesus Get your shit God. off, this. Doc always said that, 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 cool. that, that Get your shit off. had talent. Did you hear that? He's exposing things that probably people only know behind the scenes. Like, we never, the other guy, Dave, I guess, didn't want to sign you because he said he thought you had no talent. Like, imagine saying this. Now, I know this is kind of, to give him a bit of a bligh, there is another narrative out there that exists that says Reason's been doing this for a while, right? They're saying Reason's been doing this for a while. He goes on streams and he or interviews and he rants about TDE. And they've kind of warned him in the past, hey, you need to relax by, you know, mentioning us in this way or talking about us in this way. And I guess this was, again, the short that broke the camera's back. And there's also another thing to add context to this. It seems like Reason and Musa are quite close. Even though he's a president over there at TDE, he's obviously kind of young by the sound of his voice. So maybe they're close in age or they're just friendly. So maybe he feels that he can say what he wants to say to him because they're friends. But it's still incredibly, incredibly unprofessional to do this, man. I can't get by how impressive and professional it is to do this. Really unprofessional. It's going to take more than just talent in this game right now. And everybody know that. If you talk about weird times, you got Ravon. Ravon got motion. Ravon ain't got an album out, a project out yet. You got Dolce. She got motion. She ain't got an <laughs> album out. Uh, uh, <laughs> And now he's and now he's comparing Reason with other artists on the label. He's called, talking about Ray Vaughan. He's talking about Doshi. He's trying to compare Reason's career trajectory of being like a really you know introspective lyricist type of artist to a female rapper like Doshi, who's new in the game, kind of young, has a completely different demographic. It's just an awful way to kind of make your point. And obviously, it's kind of done in the more sort of a mocking way as opposed to just actually trying to help. Let him cook, let him cook, bro. Let him cook, let him cook, bro. Let him cook, bro. Let him cook. Even when I hear niggas saying features and and everything, keep in mind, like, oh yeah, you could have got an ESTG feature, but what does that do for for reason? Like, what is that gonna do for reason? Like, even when you say you can't get in contact with SZA and all that, like this, like you didn't have features from everybody, including Q. I'm just, Shout out I'm, to just, you I'm just trying to understand it, man. Anyway, you get the point of it. I'm not going to play the whole thing. It's like eight minutes long, but it's really unfortunate, really unprofessional. Um, I think it's similar to like, I've done a few guys have worked in bars or you've worked in stores and stuff. And then you have those managers who like publicly scold their employees on the shop floor. I always hated that shit. Like I would legitimately want to punch somebody in the face if they did that. Like that stuff used to get on my nerves. Usually those managers had like power trips and would chastise you on the shop floor in front of other fucking customers and shit and try and make you look dumb. It was always, I feel like really people that are incredibly insecure that would do that sort of stuff. And again, it's just unprofessional. If you want to scold me, bring me downstairs away from everybody and do it privately. But you don't need to do this on air in front of people. And uh, there's this narrative that is going around with these back on fig guys where they're saying this was a good promotion for Reason's album. I don't think so. I don't think many people who don't give a fuck about reason are going to watch this interview and think you know what i'm going to download his song i'm going to buy his song on fucking apple and shit they're not going to do that um maybe people like me who give a shit about his music and music of real will i think the regular person will just watch this think it's a bit fucked up and then keep on keep it moving this idea that this is going to actually do stuff for a reason's career is nonsense and also i wouldn't want to be successful based on getting embarrassed you know that's what i wouldn't want to be i wouldn't want to have to publicly get, get have to get publicly scolded um have have you know have, get myself flocked in public then for me to become successful i'd rather just work grind connect to my fans make good music and then get successful that way so that's obviously not great and then i think as well to as a last point i don't think it's great for the back on fig brand that they have had this happen because it's not providing a safe space for artists because essentially they're getting artists into trouble 
this is what it's looking like by being messy by being trolly by trying to get a viral moment by asking the tough uncomfortable questions they're essentially getting the artists that are coming on stream in trouble another example recently what they did they had an interview with that guy who's called mexic the mexican ot and he was on their show and you know don't get me wrong back on figures obviously filmed in tiro's house one of his spare rooms or something and maybe because it's his home it's a bit different the dynamic but he invited you know ot there the mexican dude who's kind of blowing up now and then you know after a while i guess after an hour or so i guess he got bored or he wanted to do the other part of the show and he essentially kind of like you know told him to leave in an un in in no uncertain terms but they obviously were shocked at the time you know they were they were kind of surprised oh we're getting allowed to leave they weren't told beforehand and it kind of looked a bit awkward and they kind of left they were kind of really gracious about it and they kind of walked out but it was very unprofessional it came across like he was like he had enough like he was booting him out of his house it was really weird and obviously now Mexican OT is going to do many many podcast interviews and stuff and gone on and shit but I just feel like those sort of instances don't make them look as cool as they think it does it kind of just makes it look like it's not really a safe space you know for artists to kind of go and vent or to promote themselves and shit when they're going to be messy or when they're going to get bored of you and shit and then try and chuck you out of the house it's a bit strange but anyway Force and Feelings got to reason hopefully he keeps his head up strong um, but again this is further proof that all those things that SZA was complaining about with TDE was right. The fact that Kendrick left, obviously not to do with TDE management, I'm sure, but Kendrick leaving was a big loss. Um, SZA always complaining about her album before, I think, what's that thing? Was it not Control? Was it Control? What was the album that came out recently? Was it Control? Whatever the album was that came out recently, um, she was complaining before it dropped that it wasn't, you know, she wasn't allowed to get, it wasn't allowed to get dropped and shit, she was getting held back. And she generally just always had a bit of a, you know, fraught relationship with TDE. But now you know why, because they kind of run it like a gang. It kind of, it's weird. It's kind of like loads of this weird intimidation shit. I don't like that, man. Run as a business and also because it's black owned and it's kind of independent in a way, you would think they would learn the lessons of all the labels and what they've done wrong and try and create something near a perfect label like try and rewrite the wrongs of a label but similar to joe budden and his podcast i think what people see is that when you get into a point of when you get into a point of power you're going to put in position it's very difficult not to repeat the mistakes of others that you felt like did you wrong because the industry kind of encourages you to be a bit of a dickhead you know the game the content community the content scene encourages you to be messy to for a viral moment to get clicks and views but actually in the long run it's not the best thing so maybe they're repeating the same kind of mistakes in, the, in their own way that joe budden did when he was talking about i'm for the creator i want to make this podcast for my team and it's a friends thing and then obviously when the money side coming in and the contracts are getting discussed they all fell out him and rory and stuff and more you know because of contracts and money and ownership and all that shit so all the stuff that he said he wouldn't do he kind of did to his friends um the stuff that he kind of got you know suffered from in the music industry and it feels like these guys are doing the same thing they hate all the mainstream radio shows and shit but they're basically doing the same thing major mainstream radio shows do by being messy and creating viral moments just for the sake of it and not caring about the artists that came on so i don't like that man i thought that was fucking lame i thought that was fucking whack <laughs>